Bible study tonight. It's good to be in, in Bible study. And we are over in the book of Exodus chapter 22. And I got a whole bunch of stuff going on up here. Exodus chapter 22. And we're going to be hitting around... Uh, Verse 18 is where we're going to start at. How come I'm hearing somebody? I hear something. It's because you got the laptop. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sterling. Thank you, buddy. All right. Let's do this. Let us pray. Uh, Reverend Serrano, if you don't mind asking God's blessing upon this Bible study, please. Sir. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, for your goodness. Lord, thank you, Lord God, for this time you set apart for the study of your word. Pray that you help Pastor Lord God, lead him and guide him, and to bring forth that which you laid on his heart, Lord God. And pray, Lord God, that he touches that we have receiving hearts, Lord God. Do a work by your spirit, and we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our God is good, and to God be all the glory in this Bible study. Good to have um, everyone in the Bible study, and hope that. You enjoy it and get a blessing out of this word tonight and everything. So we're over in the book of Exodus, uh, chapter 22, and we're over at verse, let's see, verse, what did I say? 22, verse 18. There you go, verse 18. I'm going to use this computer more than that right there. So 22, verse 18. Let's do it. All right. As we enter into this, it's kind of getting the airplane off of, you know, trying to take off into it a little bit. We understand, as we have been teaching in the other Bible study, how in the Bible studies, how that there is a right way and there's a wrong way. And then there's God's way. So God has a certain way of doing things. And it is for us to conform to what God says. We do not have God to be shaped into our opinions and what we think what we think is right, but we are to be shaped into God's judgments, His views, and what He says is right. And here's the thing about it, here's the cool thing about this. Whenever the creation gets in harmony with the creator, and who's the creation? We are. We, we've been created by God. Think about it now. Just think about it for a moment. Whenever you and I get in harmony, get in tune with God, get on the same note, on the same page, when we are balanced with God, we are there where God would have us to be as far as um, making our judgments and and making decisions, we bounce it off God and we do things God's way, then it this is a this is an unfailing thing. This will not fail. That you will be blessed of God because you're in harmony. Things will begin to work out for you and I in our lives. That's just the way that it is. It's not a guessing game, it's not something that uh God is trying to trick us with. It's just a fact that when we follow God's word and we say we're going to do things God's way, uh, not by what we think is right or wrong, but we're going to do things God's way, then you bring God, you bring all of the Trinity into your life. And God begins to help you problem solve. Look at this. Not only that, he problem solves for you. He problem solves for you. He begins uh, to work things out for you and for your benefit. And, and I just experienced this not too long ago. I mean, uh, uh, man, you know, my wife goes to the grocery store, walking with God and everything. We want to be a blessing to someone and have been a blessing to people. And the next thing you know, it was just yesterday. What happened? What happened? The lady, the cashier, we didn't even ask her to do this. And I appreciate it if she's watching. Appreciate this greatly. God touched her heart. She paid for our groceries. 
You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm just putting it out there that the Lord is good. He is gracious. And, and uh, if we are in line with the Creator, I'm telling you, you'll get more than just free groceries. You'll have all of God's favor on your life. And that's what you're after. You're after God's favor. Now, Pastor, are you saying I get free groceries if I follow God? I'm not saying that. I'm saying that you will get God's favor. Okay? There's people who are sick. They may be sick. They may even be about to die. But they have God's favor upon their life. Okay? Because sometimes things, sometimes things don't go as we want them to go. Sometimes things get all, you know, get in the whirlwind, but you still have the hand of God on you in the whirlwind. I would rather have the hand of God on me in the whirlwind than have no hand on me at all in the whirlwind. Okay? So let's go on with it. He said, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. The Lord is against witchcraft. In the book of Exodus, chapter 22, verse 18, says, Thou shalt not suffer or allow a witch to live. Now, over, um, well, before we get into that, before we get into that, the word of the Lord here declares that witchcraft before God, a person that commits that, that commits witchcraft under the Old Testament law, they were to get stoned. A person practicing this. Now, somebody may look at that and say, now, now, wait a minute. Now, uh, uh, I mean, why don't they just pray for forgiveness? Is this, that, and other? God, by his grace, has given the word. We should not practice witchcraft, okay? In the Old Testament, at this time, that was God's rule concerning that. The Lord takes witchcraft way more serious than stealing. He takes witchcraft, a person that commits witchcraft, way more serious than committing adultery. This witchcraft is a very, if it is such a bad thing to God where he said concerning this, the punishment for that is for them to die. And, and this is the thing about the Lord. Sometimes God will, he will do things to prevent stuff from spreading, okay? God will not, uh, if God did not deal with Israel this way, knowing the heart of the children of Israel, knowing the complainers and the murmurers and those who would take up idols and everything, knowing how they are, no doubt, that you let one witch live, then another witch will come, and then another one, and then another one. Then you have a whole um, infestation of witchcraft in that nation, and God wants that nation to remain holy. He said, you shall not suffer a witch to live. And also, we understand that uh, in the word of God, that the Bible defines rebellion as the sin of witchcraft. Whenever a person rebels against God and, and goes against God and, and, and will not do what God says after God has dealt with them over and over and over again, he says that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And I'm going to find it right here. That's the reason why I got this out. I'm going to look up the word uh, in the King James version of the Bible here Just so I can find a scripture for you rebellion rebellion enter alright and I believe it's over in 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 23 turn over there real quick and you will see it First Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. We're going to start in First Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. It's even better. Here's the wind up. 
1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22 through 23 says, And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken or to listen than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Now stop right there. This is dealing with Saul, King Saul. And Samuel gave him specific instructions to destroy everything in this nation. Don't, don't mess, destroy everything, men, women, cattle, whatever they got there, destroy it. But what did he do? He wound up bringing these animals in. He, you know, he went and God, God delivered. Now, God uh, helped him destroy the army. And then he saved the king alive. He did not do what God said and tell him to do. So here he comes, and he's done this more than one time now. Here he comes to Samuel the prophet. And Samuel can hear these animals, bad lambs. He said, he heard, he said, what's this bleating I'm hearing in my ears? I hear animals in my ears. What are they doing here, Saul? Oh, I brought them, he said, to sacrifice to God. Isn't that like people today? They really think that their sacrifice to humanity and their giving of offering, and we're going to do this for the boys club, and we're going to do this for the girls club, and we're going to give this to the church, and we're going to give this to that, and give this to this, but they won't do what God said. They won't listen and follow his instruction because fornicators and adulterers pay time. <laughs> you got people who live in sin, they curse, they lie, they cheat, and they still pay tithe, they still give the boys club, they still help humanitarian efforts and all that stuff, but they won't quit living in adultery. All right? This is where they line up right here, where God said, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And also, but I want to bring this out, verse 22 said, Behold, to obey. Look at verse 22 now. Don't get mad at the pastor. Don't even get mad at the Bible. The Bible's trying to help you. The Bible said in verse 22, Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken and to listen than the fat of rams. On the flip side of that, you got people who obey God, who listen to God, who follow God. And they haven't given millions and millions of dollars to humanitarian efforts. And there is nothing against humanitarian efforts, no. But he said, the Bible said, of which there's a right way and there's a wrong way and then there's God's way. This is the way saved people walk, okay? I'm not talking about the hypocrite or the wannabes. This is the way the real deal walk. They walk in obedience to God. That's the key. And when we obey God, the, the giving and the offering comes because of our obedience to God. The giving and offering does not come first. The obedience comes first. When we got saved, how did we get saved? We first obeyed the voice. We didn't give to the good will. We obeyed the voice in the church. We didn't sit there and say, oh, I'm going to send something to some humanitarian effort. We didn't say, I'm going to pay my tithe. 
We said, we in obedience came to the altar. The pastor said, come, and we came. Or even if we was at home, some said kneel, and we knelt. And in obedience to the scripture, we said, I receive you. That's part of obedience. You, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior, and that's what made us right. It's not how many old ladies you walk across the street. It's how your ears are to the word. Do you have attentive ears? And if you're ear and if you're not attentive, there's one or two things that need to take place. Number now, uh, if you are not listening to God after being saved, then you need to get back. You need to get back to having listening ears. And or you've never been saved. Now, which one is it? You've probably never been saved because the first thing you have to obey the word by saying confessing Jesus as your Lord and Savior God commands that and we we all obey first I obey first before I start giving anything you know what I'm saying and what happened was God brought it to my attention when the man dealt with me about tithing then God dealt with me. He dealt with me through my obedience that I first showed to him when I first came to him. And so and out of obedience, paper tied him, you know. Obey first. Obey first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these other things. You know, clothing, houses, lands, yes, but also all the other extra bells and whistles you want to give, you want to do this, you want to do that, that shall be added. Get right. Get right with God. That's it, right? Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. I remember the first time I heard that, Reverend Tony Keys was preaching down in uh, Colleen, Texas, and I had some lows coming my neck. I'm like, goodness, I ain't know it was that serious. <laughs> but it's that serious. All right? I was talking to a man today. Let me tell you how you look at the word of God. Don't look at it as a bunch of do's and don'ts. Get that out of your head because when you look at the word of God as a bunch of do's and don'ts, then it can cause you, and I, I don't want to, it can cause you to become tired. It can cause you to become weary because your whole view is do's and don'ts, right? I remember talking to this guy, and this is a funny story. This is, this is a funny story. He was perplexed. Uh, matter of fact, uh, some of my colleague Texas brothers, if they're watching this, they probably will laugh. But this, this cat was perplexed because going, he, in his mind, he said, now, when we get to heaven, and I mean, he was plumb, gravely serious. I mean, this dude was serious. And I thought it was um, quite hilarious. And I was at the royal age of 20. He said that, um, so when we go to heaven, we're not going to be able to, you know, get with the women and, and have, uh, you know, sexual relations with the one that we perhaps would like to be with up in heaven. And I said, hey, man, uh, up in heaven, we're not going to be doing stuff like that, man. And his face, he looked so, he looked so pitiful. And I, at the time, you know, I'm looking at it like, man, I don't know where this cat's coming from. I mean, he, he got to be out there with me, you know. <laughs> and the dude was like, I mean, he looked like, and that's all he could see. That's all he could see was he can't have that. He could not see any benefit of serving God. All he saw was that loss. That's all he saw, a so-called loss. Now, 
when we get to heaven, then, you know, your head, your mind is going to be so different. You go, heaven is, if you look at the poor guy, it's more to life than that. You know? There are people who can get that at any time they want, but they wind up committing suicide. So what that tell you? And they're depressed and they're not happy. And, and look at Hollywood. Them some miserable people. They switch out people like socks. But we trip over not being able to, to get with someone out of wedlock. That's all you see. The, 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 and you don't see the benefit or how the blessing of serving God. See, there are some people who see the blessing in serving God. There are some people who can see the prosperity in serving God. And they wind up being blessed physically, monetarily, spiritually, anything, because they believe God. They believe that the, the laws of God are created to help them and to prosper them so that they can have a wonderful, happy, full life. When you look at it that way, it makes all the difference in the world. Imagine a man who has made up their mind to not rebel against God. And they see, okay, if I don't rebel against God, then I will not lack for anything. If I don't rebel against God, then I will, I will be able to pray for healing. If I don't rebel against God, then when people try to harm me, when I can't see it coming, God will protect me. When they see it that way, it makes serving God, you want to serve God, you want to find out, okay, you can start getting like this. Now, this you can figure out how you can literally milk the blessings of God out of heaven. You don't want to do more for God. You want to serve God. God, what else do you got? Because I understand that if I walk with you and know you in a reality, I'm good. A person like that will never lose out with God. And they're always, it just seems like, like Earl Nightingale said, good luck, if you want to call it that, follows them wherever they go. And what did David say? I believe it was David who said, mercy and goodness shall follow me. That's the way he saw serving God. And what happened? He was king. He was very rich, very wealthy, very blessed. That he was not living in witchcraft. Let's go back. We having fun tonight? Amen. Just trying to, trying to help someone out there. Look at the benefit. Don't look at the do's and don'ts. Let's go back. It'd be nice for somebody to say, the day, since I got saved, I never curse. You know, what kind of feeling is that? <laughs> That's a beautiful feeling, isn't it? Go back. We're over in Exodus chapter 22. I got to get myself back locked in. I don't want to keep on in. Verse 19, 22, verse 19, for your benefit. For your benefit, Israel, whosoever life with a beast shall surely be put to death. God count that a great sin. You can't be sleeping with animals. You can't be getting busy with animals. According to God's rules, not, I don't know about other rules, but we're going by the Bible, right? We're going by the Bible. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 22, verse 19, Rod Davis didn't say that. Exodus 22, verse 19 said that. Are we going to persecute the word of God? Are we going to take the Bible and throw it out? The first textbook in our school system, are we going to get rid of it? Because it said, whosoever lies with the beast shall surely be put to death. It's the same book that the president pledges on. Not President Trump. All our presidents have pledged on. Said, you can't do that. That's a sin. That's a sin. You know, a person that's able to do that, that's something wrong with them. And they are, they are hurting. They are really hurting. They're painfully hurting. They got things that, that's on the inside that they are dealing with to be able to sleep with a dog, to be able to sleep with a cat. You know something. That man need help. And so why are we going to leave? If we, if we are very, if, if we love the, our fellow man, why would we want to leave that man in that type of thought pattern in their mind? What's, what's going on? What, what are they hurting over to make them to be able to do 
something that rare, that humans rarely do. But we say, we think, we get so warped that we think that we are hurting the person by telling them what God said when they are miserable and calling out for help. God said this. He said, don't do that. I bring that out for a reason because I'm online. I'm online and I want to let you know that we coming from the Bible. I'm not, I'm not judging anyone. God said, he said right here in Exodus, in the Old Testament, that they are to be put to death. And let me tell you something. God may not mention it in the New Testament, but I guarantee you God has not changed. Because this is a moral law. This has nothing to do with the shadow, with, with, you know. This is a moral law. Now, they can be forgiven, yes. They can be forgiven. But God said, we don't want seedlings to begin, seedlings to begin to produce in a nation that I have called out. That is the purpose. Let it be put to death God's way. Verse 20, Exodus chapter 22, verse 20, and God still against people laying with animals. And that's Bible. Exodus chapter 22, verse 20 says, He that sacrificeth unto any God, save unto the Lord. There's people who sacrifice to all kind of gods out there, huh? And, and we and we call, we say, hey, but they don't sacrifice unto the true and living God, and I leave that alone until God allows me to deal with some things. But he that sacrificed, I'm going to let the word talk. He that sacrifices unto any God, save unto the Lord only, he shall be utterly destroyed. God said, I do not want that to be in my people. I do not want those little seedlings to be produced because if we let one do it, then we have to let the other destroy them, get them out of there. Verse 21 says, Thou shalt neither vex a stranger nor oppress him. Vex and oppress means the same thing. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Now he's talking to his people here. He said, You're not to, you were strangers. Consider yourself. It's only, it's because I chose you. You're nothing special without me. And you need to remember where you come from. Amen. I remember where I come from, you know. And we have to be merciful. You're not to vex strangers. We need, we need to be loving, right? Well, pastor, isn't that, isn't that a conflict? Because now you got people who have lain with beasts and, and, they, are, and they are witches. Or, and, and, and isn't that oppressive toward them? See, here's the difference, though. This scripture in verse 21 is talking about strangers, meaning other nations. You're not to vex them or or people who are not greater or stronger than you and you're not to oppress them because you're stronger you're not to be a bully nation okay but within you you're not going to allow the sin of bestiality you're not going to allow the sin of witchcraft and you're not going to allow the sin of people worshiping other gods within the nation within the nation they do that you execute them Outside the nation, outside the nation, you're not going to oppress the stranger, okay? And what the nations do outside, they can do bestiality, they can do whatever they want to do. But as for my people, you're not going to do that. Now look, let's stop right there. Hey, who we being raised by? We're being raised by the king of kings. The world can do whatever. You have a media out there. You have uh, all kind of media outlets out there who hate the Bible. They, they hate the word of God. And they are strangers, as far as God's concerned. They are strangers because the things of God are strange to them. They don't like the things that are of God. But as for us, we are his people. We are to like it. Right? Amen. So we're not to act like the other nations. And we're not to act like people outside of God's will. The Christians are not to act like people who are outside of God's will. And I can stop right there because you know who's outside of God's will. I don't even have to even name it. So therefore, as we get ready in, ye shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. The man of the house dies. Then, back then, women did not have a lot of power. 
and a fatherless child, child was weak, can't do anything, a woman and a baby. He said, you're not gonna, you're not gonna afflict them. Because God said, if thou afflict them in any wise, he said, if they cry it all unto me, he said, I will surely hear their cry. That's the problem. God said, I'll be the man. You don't want to get God mad. See, that's the thing about, I wish people would go back to this and, and I thank God, you know, hey, I'm going to keep it real, man. Is it all right, y'all? I'm going to make some people mad. I thank God for the president. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and laugh. It's all right. I thank God for the president because I do not feel threatened as a church. And I'm glad that he has stood for the church from this day forth. And I don't care who out there hate me. Over. Because for a man to get up and, and, and sacrifice his money, the man is getting paid, what, I think a dollar a year or something like that. And the rest of it goes to the He don't even want the money. For a man to get up there and sacrifice and stand for God and the church, how can you be mad at that? I don't care who you are out there. You can be mad at me all you want. So, so whatever, because you're mad at Jesus. If you don't know me, That's right. get saved. Get right with God. Then you will say, I see that that man is trying to protect this country and trying to keep it on track with God. God. Okay, I had to get emotional, but I'm out of here. May God bless you real good. I'm happy. Be happy. Jesus is happy. And I ain't wringing my hands on who this is me or not. Because I got friends. I got friends. And I got family. And God is good. Hey, Sarah Nara, peace out. See you uh, when? Wednesday. Have a good one. <laughs>